hopefully it's live streaming. If not, we'll share the video too. So um, I just want to thank you for coming on and, and talking with me. Jill and I have been friends, I don't even know, how long now? 15 years? Yeah, it's got to be at least 15, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. In your other life, which we'll probably get to at some point. So um, this is my very dear friend, Jill Vaza, and she is the owner of Mia Naturals. And I think we should just kick it off by letting you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Mia Naturals and your product. Well, all righty. So where do you begin? Um, Nia Natural. So I started the skincare line, which is an all natural skincare line. It's a hundred percent all natural. More or less kind of, I think I would say, um, uh, more or less on a whim. Um, it was kind of my combination of my love of holistic health and wellness. Um, I became an esthetician, which you said we'll talk about later on, I think. Um, about five, six years ago, I went back to school uh -huh. um, to get my esthetician license, and um, we started a actual mobile spa right after I graduated, and we were going to people's homes, and we needed a product that would work on everybody kind of right away. I was working on my clients um, individually with really problem skin. Um, you know, cystic acne, rosacea, eczema, so people with really problem skin. I've always personally used kind of um, holistic um, methods on my skin, and we developed a product. We came up with our first product um, that was actually working so well on people that I said to myself, okay, I guess we have to bring it to the general public at this point. So um, one thing led to another. And we launched a product line with a, a schoolmate of mine from Capri. We both went to Capri Beauty School in Newburgh. And we launched our first product about uh, five years ago. And it's kind of just taken off since then. <laughs> so, okay. Life, so, sometimes life happens when you're making other plans, right? <laughs> absolutely, it does. Yeah. So you decided about five or six years ago to go to school for uh, your license to be an esthetician. And before that, what were you doing? Uh, I was an insurance uh, sales broker. And how basically, long you basically a producer online. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I was an out of office. Sorry about that. That's all right. I'm still running because <laughs> I'm yeah. here at the job. Um, yeah, so I started, uh, I was a producer for a insurance agency for about 35 years. And uh, my daughter was actually going to Capri Beauty School. Sorry, let me just try to stop this. Um, I don't know why it's not stopping. There it goes, sorry. Um, yeah, so my daughter was going to Capri Beauty School and uh, she said, come in and get your hair done and you need to get signatures when you're going to school. You need to get, you know, you need to do so many haircuts, you need to do so many colors. And she said, come on in and get your hair done. So I did. And she said, while you're here, why don't you go in the back and, um, and get a facial? And I did, and I'm sitting there and the woman who gave me a facial, it just was like, you know, synergistic that she happened to be working for a very large corporation. And she was probably a little bit older than me at the time. And she said, I am just so done with the corporate world. And she's working on my face and it was so relaxing and it was wonderful. And I'm laying there and I'm going, wow, you know, I'm really kind of tired of the corporate world too, because I worked in commercial lines, uh, sales in, in the insurance industry so I was out there on the streets you know trying to you know it's it's it was a it's a doggy world out there because you know every time you have a renewal your other insurance agents are trying to steal your accounts from you so it can be it can be brutal um, and I was like I just love this lifestyle and I, I think I like I said I always kind of felt like I was holistic um, you know years ago but then again life happens while you're making plans and I ended up in the insurance industry so I, I just literally made my mind up right there and then. I, maybe it was a couple of days later. I went uh, and I signed up for school. I mean, it was just like that. And uh, I was working for an insurance agency at the time. And right after I graduated, I walked in and told them I'm leaving. And wow. Yeah, I gave them like two weeks notice. And this is a 35 year career, you know. Uh, and they kind of laughed at me. They were like, oh, Jill. They were like, I know, you kind of had a bad month, but it's like, yeah, no. I, I was like, yeah, I did, but that's okay. And it's not, I'm really, really like leaving. 
and it wasn't like on bad terms or anything like that. I was just decided at, you know, almost 50 years old that it was time for a change and I wanted to do what I love. So was it a risk? Yeah. Is it a risk that I feel like was phenomenal? Absolutely. And I still love the insurance industry, you know? Um, it, it's not that I didn't, you know, like what I did, but, um, you know, I, I'm doing what I really love now. And I think that that's, you know, what makes a big difference for yeah, me. Yeah, so talk a little bit. Of, I mean, listen, I think a lot of people um, would can relate that they have a passion and a dream and, maybe want to leave a um, job or a corporate setting and start their own business, but not everyone does. So what, um, what really propelled you to do that? Uh, I, honestly, I don't know. I can't really tell. I, I really, it, just one thing led to another. Sometimes you just want to change. You know, I wanted a more simple, although I thought it was going to be simple. <laughs> Not so simple now, but at the time I thought it'd be a simple way to end, you know, the second journey of my life. Um, but it, it, there's nothing simple about this. But um, I do absolutely love it. I'm very passionate about what I do. I love the people I meet. Um, I have to be honest, in, in the insurance industry, people didn't run up and say, oh my gosh, you're like changed my life. Nobody ever did that before, um, you know, where my products actually, people do say like, your products have changed my life. Um, people who what do have to feel like, oh, that's like, that's the only thing that keeps me going, honestly. Um, sometimes, you know, I mean, some days I'm just like, what was I thinking? I mean, cause uh -huh. it's 70 hours a week. It's literally sometimes 70 hours a week. If we're getting a lot of orders, things have slowed down and the dynamics have changed now a little bit, but, um, yeah, especially in the beginning, because not only, I mean, I formulated a product and then I formulated another product and now we have about 13 products. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's 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 just um pause right there let's just introduce because i mean listen i want you to be able to share your product uh and i will say full disclosure not only are we friends i love the product i use it myself um and i would like for you to just you know share a little bit about that so your first product that you created yourself is the cleansing oil right so um yeah what what what's different about it so it's, it's, well, first of all, it's a cleansing oil, just like you said. So it's an oil that you actually wash your face with. And I have them all here handy. Um, so this was our first product and it's a barberry fig cleansing oil. And it's made with five um, carrier oils, which is almond oil, rice brand oil, camellia, hazelnut and barberry fig. And then it has a essential oil blend. So you literally wash your face with oil based on the oil cleansing philosophy that oil bonds to oil, oil bonds to dirt. And in this case, it will bond to the oils, dirts, and bacteria, most importantly, in your skin without disturbing the pH balance of your skin. 100% all natural. It does have a um, algae extract in it that helps it to emulsify and it actually rinses completely clean. So you use it dry hands on a dry face, right over your makeup, just as I am now. Dry hands, rub it in, dry face, safe yeah. to get into the eye area to remove makeup. Um, and then just warm water, rinse, it's gonna rinse completely clean. So yeah, it's great you know, it is, it is. And it's very addicting because I, I couldn't imagine washing my face with anything else. Once you start washing your face with oil, your skin just feels balanced. If it doesn't feel, um, it doesn't feel dry. It doesn't feel oily. It just really feels, in my opinion, very, very balanced. And people with oily skin, like I said, it's, it's ironic that I was working on people with cystic acne, rosacea, those kind of things. So people with, um, you know, oily skin would think it would be counterintuitive to wash your face with oil, but it's really just the complete opposite that people with, um, oily skin really benefit a lot. And those are the people who come running up and say, Oh my gosh, like you changed my life. So, you know, I do a lot of demos. We're in a lot of stores throughout Hudson Valley, New York, New Jersey, New York city, um, Pennsylvania now, I think down to Virginia, down the coast a little bit now. So that's pretty exciting. So sometimes, I'm in, so yeah, so I'm in the stores and I'm doing demos. And then, like I said, they come up, they're like, are you the, I'm like, yeah. 
they're like, I used to have this, I used to have that, or if they write in or, um, you know, thank God now for Instagram and Facebook and all that jazz, because people are always reaching out, asking advice. I like the camaraderie. So, um, you know, that yeah. I can help people, you know, one-on-one -on -one and, uh, that that's that's you know that's what does it for me um, so yeah. um i think a lot of people like i said can relate to having a dream and starting a business and you were moved to leave corporate the corporate job that you had 35 years in insurance and start a business uh well really first you decided you were going to go and get your um license to be an esthetician at that point did you know you wanted to go into your own business or were you thinking you were going to work in a spa uh, I was, well, to be honest, I was going to, yes, I was going to open my own spa. Um, things happened a little differently. I was actually supposed to move. It didn't happen. Um, I ended up staying here. Um, my mom got sick, so I ended up staying here and taking care of her. And, but in the interim, I still had to work. Um, so I, that's when I started the mobile spa, which was kind of fun. We did that. I started it. And then my daughter, the one who went to Capri also, she joined me. So we had a lot of fun. We had an 18 foot box truck. Yeah, uh, that was pretty innovative. I have to say. <laughs> that was wrapped. Uh, we had it like completely wrapped and it looked like a brick and mortar driving down the street. Like it had make-believe windows kind of. So uh, that was a lot of fun. We did a lot of uh, bridal hair makeup. We did a lot of uh, girls night in parties. At one time we had like 11 girls working for us, um, mm -hmm. like on a fan basis. And we probably had about five to six parties a weekend. Wow. So yeah. But then, then here again, I mean, you know, I get these great ideas that it was phenomenal, but uh, very, very trying on my body. Hence, you know, I'm, I mentioned that 5-0 word. <laughs> then I was 50 and moving forward. <laughs> uh, you know, carrying this equipment in and out of places was getting cumbersome. And so I did need another vehicle that I could use that would make a residual income on the background. So I'm not working dollars for hours you know because that's you know it gets that gets tough um yeah. so and i knew that i couldn't sustain that forever because you were literally i was we were literally like bringing beds in full you know mm -hmm. sometimes three, four or five beds all the equipment plus the linens and um yeah and, and and as i mentioned earlier we also needed a product that could work on everybody in a pinch when you're doing some kind of um, event like that. You can't really, you don't have time to analyze everybody's skin. And that's what makes my products also wonderful is that they really work on all skin types, 100%. Mm -hmm. Whether you're dry, whether you're oily, whether you're a combo, because it just puts the homeostasis balance that the skin needs to be in. It just corrects so, Jill, the I'm sorry to interrupt you. What, what did you know about making skincare? What did you know about creating a product? Uh, a lot of research, again, did um, research. I did, okay. yeah, oh yeah, tons of research, um, a lot of trial and error. Mm -hmm. uh, we've tweaked the product probably quite a few times, especially in the beginning. Um, there's things like temperature control. So we had to learn that as we were going along. So just from the manufacturing end, we had to learn a lot. From the business end, holy cow. <laughs> Crazy. So, you know, let's talk about that. I, uh, so I call this series, you're the second person I'm interviewing, I have a few more lined up, I call this series um, Surviving to Thrive. And so I think what I, my vision was, uh, was to talk to small business owners and interview people who can share the real perspective about starting and owning and running a business. It, it is gratifying, it is um, exciting, and it's also the hardest thing you might ever do. It is challenging. I mean, one thing that I wrote down while you were talking is um, creativity, uh, ingenuity. You know, you definitely have shown that, like with the box truck. And, you know, again, a lot of people can, can have a, a dream about starting a business. They may or may not take action on it. Some people take action on it, but then the idea of creating a product line is a whole other dimension. You know, so what's the hardest thing you think, if you could name one or two things, what's the hardest thing about being in business for yourself? Well, it's hard to name one or two things, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's really hard. You start off with like a great product, which I mean, I know I'm not the only person, so whether it's a, you know, grandma's tomato sauce or it's a great skincare line. I mean, that's all fabulous. So you start in your kitchen, 
you make something wonderful, particularly in this type of industry, when you're in the manufacturing, I'm talking about, you know, directly, and you love your product and you love what you do, but then now you have to, you know, there's so many things that go behind it, from the labeling, to labeling mistakes, to bottle mistakes, to temperature controls, I mean, things that I just never even thought of, you know. Um, and then, of course, the industry is a tough, tough industry. The beauty industry by itself is really, really tough. Um, it's obviously competitive. Um, I chose to try to sell, sell to stores, so we're selling to retailers um, before, um, you know, before the virus. Um, you know, we were, we were really had a lot of momentum going and now this definitely put a halt. So that's a different, that's a whole different, uh, yeah. issue well, there. Let's talk about that too. I mean, the COVID, the COVID-19 has, um, caused a lot of havoc, uncertainty, challenge. I mean, um, aside from the health risks, right? It's the risk that it has posed now to small businesses and some businesses are, um, you know, really experiencing what it means to survive right now. And some are pivoting and shifting and, and managing to do well, and others are thriving because of it. Where do you, where would you put your business? How has COVID-19 affected you and Nia Naturals? Well, you know, it's hard to say because I think that when this first hit, we were really like 2020 was going to be the year. Everybody uh, thought that. They say it takes like five years for a business to really take off. I mean, I'll be honest. We, we also, I, like I said, we have 13 products. So when anything, then, you know, all of our revenue, we were putting back into products. Manufacturing, I don't take a paycheck really, you know, I mean, that's a God's honest truth. I do have a few employees that I pay. But I mean, I overall work for free. And this was gonna be the year, which is a whole different issue. Um, you know, on a, when you talk about problems, you also have to have very, somebody very supportive yeah. that can help you, you know? So that's, a, that's there's so in many different dynamics. In your personal life, In your personal life, absolutely. Yeah, there's so many different dynamics to running a business um, because yeah. you are working a lot of hours. You have to have somebody who understands that, that you're not gonna get paid a lot in the beginning um yeah so um to get back to your question so it I, I think that the business was going to take off into a different direction i really we had i did have in april some big um appointments out west with some stores that were like 200 locations we're talking franchise stores um so i was kind of disappointed by that 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 didn't happen um Right now, we our online has picked up tremendously, and I have to like want thank you everybody out there who's been like I get emotional now who's been so supportive, um, friends, family, um, you know, students from Capri, customers, client. I mean, I could just go on and on to other um, people in the industry, to other um, estheticians. You know, like you consider I don't consider anybody, a, a, you know, competitor. I right. think we should all work together. I'm very, very team oriented. And you can really see the camaraderie between other estheticians, between other um, manufacturers who are supporting each other. So that's huge and spreading the word. Um, again, thank God for like this, this Instagram and Pinterest and all these things where people are really sharing and caring and supporting local um, yeah. during this time. So thank God for that, we are holding our own. So we're no worse, we, we haven't moved ahead as I expected to do this year, yeah. but but on the other hand, now all of a sudden, since this has happened, I'm like, hmm, maybe this isn't so bad after all. Because yeah, so I, I've, had, I've had conversations with a lot of business owners about this. Again, what, what inspired me to do this video series. So what are some good things that have come out of COVID-19? Or, or maybe, you know, I, I'll rephrase it. What is, what is something that you're doing now that you never thought would have worked before? Um. Well, I mean, I am looking more deeply into the online. One of the things, uh, one of the girls that actually works for me just left and she said, you're, per and she hasn't been here. She just came today. Um, and she said, Jill, you went from like, like here all the time, all the time, all the time. She goes, I can see it in your whole demeanor. You are like a different person. You went from going a hundred miles an hour to like just, you know, and, and I do it and I do it and I'm fun. You know, I do it and it's fun yes. and I love running, 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 but 
there's, there's something, something to be said for for being efficient with your time and putting your you know directing your energy in the most and i think this is important for anyone listening who's in business or thinking about starting a business you know you have to know where your dollar producing activities are and there's only so much time in a day so you know and like you said there's you are your business your personal life and your business right you're only one person so the energy you put out in your business leaves you with less energy for yourself, right? So yeah, yeah. Are, so do you key, feel the the difference now? Oh, absolutely. The balance is completely different right now. Yeah, yeah. And and when it and it will of course pick up again into a different dynamic again. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm definitely looking at different ways to do things. Uh, you know i mean zoom there's no reason again like so i'd be going to a lot of stores i'd be doing all these demos myself i'd be running from new york city to virginia to yeah. you know all the way upstate um i was gonna so there's no reason to do that we have zoom world you know i yeah. can train other people to do it so there's a lot of different things i felt like if i weren't doing it it wasn't going to get done yeah um, and it's and you it's, don't feel um, that way now no no that's huge yeah huge yeah, I, I, I believe a lot of people are, are in this place where they're they're realizing that uh, they're they're accomplishing what they you know need to do and they're finding success in a different way, in a different format. We're more adaptable than we believe or you know resilient. And uh, sometimes the challenges force us to be creative, right? So without having a challenge, we're just kind of going in the same way we've always gone and we may not be forced to think out of the box. But now with the challenges that are in front of us, we're forced to think out of the box. Yeah, yep, yep, for sure, for yeah. sure. I mean, one of the mistakes I had made was over ordering um, uh, raw ingredients. Thank God I did, because now one of the challenges is they're very hard to find. With oh, deliveries, interesting, with you got any, lucky there. <laughs> any kind of deliveries are tough um, to yeah. try to find bottles particularly or from cabs i don't know if they come mm -hmm. from a different country or wherever it's going on but mm -hmm. um you can barely find them anymore or they're on severe back order to like july or august so thank god i did have a lot um yeah so i'm making like new products now i have a little more time to do what i actually did love which what i started started off was formulating so i have a lot of time to do um, more formulating i'm taking a master's uh you know degree uh, master formulation formulator degree Great. Uh, certification so like i have a little more time to do what i originally wanted to do was right more product. and you know oh. it's really it also letting me sink my teeth into some things that i wasn't able to touch before because in, in addition to just being a form nothing is outsourced we do everything ourselves here so you know i it's websites it's this it's that so it's giving me time to sink my teeth into all of that to get a better grip on it because i think a lot of times people start a business and you're so excited you just go 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 and you know and all these things are you know kind of can pile up in the background that you really got to sink your teeth into so I'm happy and to be as a it. as a small business owner have you found yourself wearing a lot of hats all of them <laughs> <laughs> Every talk about that a little bit? Bit. yeah it's great <laughs> yeah it's great it is great it's great but it's uh it you know again so now i'm the social media person um you know yeah it is you find yourself wearing so a lot what are of some hats. of the hats that you're wearing you're you're formulating and manufacturing what else sales yeah we do the bottling the labeling the sales i do the website design i do uh all of the social media posts i did just hire a blogger so that's the first time i've actually hired somebody that would do something like that and actually speak on behalf of me think, right you know, so that's going to be an interesting to see how, how that rolls around uh, yeah. i have good, i have good confidence in her but um yeah and then of course i i do the uh, shop maintenance and the cleaning and the fixing <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you pretty much do it all it's uh you know there's all different kinds of modalities that go on and it's it's great though it's great when you love what you do you never work a day in your life right yeah for sure what has been the most rewarding part of owning your own business again i think it's well i you know it's interesting because i've always had time um i've never really been a, uh never had to punch a clock even in the insurance industry, because I was an at a, at a office uh, producer, so I was you know on the road. Um, 
I definitely think it's the people. It's the people in the community. Um, I also donate 20 cents of every product to Women for Women International. What um, is that? It's, a, 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 in, it's an international um, organization that helps marginalize women of war. Oh. Yeah. So 20 cents of every product uh, sold goes to that. Uh, Why my is bigger, that important to you? Uh, helping, helping, well, it's big because we're a women-based business. Um, and I, you know, I just feel like very, I've been very blessed in my life and I do like to do type of missionary work. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So that's something I definitely want to do later on. Uh, you know, hopefully within the next few years to actually be able to go join them. Interesting. Um, so those are, that's like really my biggest vision, I would say now, is also helping the community that we live in. Um, yeah, and so what drives that? I mean, there are a lot of companies who are socially conscious and who uh, really align with a lot of different charities or they develop their own charities. Again, you know, what, tell us a little bit more, like what drives you there? You know, why is it important for you to be able to support the organization that you chose or be a woman owned business, you know, what does that all mean to you? I, yeah, gosh, I mean, that goes back to just supporting women from years ago. Um, I've had my own issues, I guess you could say with some domestic violence issues and things like that. So, um, you know, keep it real. That's, that's really what it stems from. Um, mm -hmm. I'm strong. People seem to look up to me. <laughs> Uh, which I think is, is, is great. I'm always like, don't follow me. <laughs> Unless you really You're want to learn. You're perfectly imperfect like the rest yeah. of us, right? That's what I always say. I'm perfectly imperfect. Yeah, no, a diamond in the rough, always working on it. But, mm -hmm. it, you know, um, but I, I think I do have, um, I think I can bring a lot to the table to, you know, people who are less fortunate. Um, Part of the vision is, you know, we are in the Newburgh area, which is definitely could use some um, some help. We'll put it mm -hmm. that way. And I'd like to support the community. And there's a couple organizations that I'm considering working with, or hopefully will be considered working with me, where we can work out like some kind of integrated work programs. Awesome. For women. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, just create some jobs in the area and help kind of bring back Newburgh. I'm part of that. I'm part of a few different organizations in the Newburgh area. That's so great. we can do something like that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I, uh, I volunteer some time uh, for Habitat for Humanity, which is, you know, based out of Newburgh. So um, I, uh, I'm on one of the task force with the board there. So it's pretty cool. I love hearing that. Um, so what advice would you give to someone who's thinking of starting their own business? I definitely say go for it. I mean, do your work, just drive your passion. It's, you know, it's got to be in your heart. Um, if you have the will, just do it, really. I, I think sometimes people feel like they need to overanalyze things, you know? Maybe you just got to, like, jump in and do it. Mm. And I really started it with little to no money. If there's <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> one bottle at a time um and if there's a will there's a way you know you really just have to have that stick to itiveness and um I, I just I could never give up you know yeah I, it, it could be a lot it could be easier um <laughs> to, to yeah give up I mean I think I think what's important I, there are some people who are listening to you right now saying yes and there's someone else going, oh, we have to make a plan and we have to have an outline. We have to have this and that. We have to have money in the bank. And, and you know what? I think you need a little of all of it. I oh. think that there's definitely value in, in having a well thought out plan, yet there has to be some element of being a risk taker. And I think that's something all entrepreneurs have in common. And we're all cut from a different cloth, right? We have to be willing to get ourselves out there and be creative and be you know, willing to, well, let me ask you this. Are you willing to fail? No. <laughs> I don't think failure is an option. Failure is not an option. <laughs> it's there might be a step back or two at times, right? It could be a little bit of like yeah. a cha-cha, right? A little step forward, a step back. Absolutely. Oh, uh, there's been a keep lot at of it until there has been a lot of step backs. Yeah. I mean, there's been times that's been very scary. A lot of debt, you know, um, yeah. 
there's been very scary times. It's, you know, this was scary. This was terrifying when, you know, uh, two months ago when, when COVID first, I, and most of 70% of my business was stores and they were not ordering beauty care products. That was not, that was not their (laughs) number one priority. I have um, now made a sanitizer. So that's, you know. Oh, you should talk about that. What have you done? Well, a sanitizer. I was able to get FDA approved alcohol. Yep. And so now I make my own sanitizer, hand sanitizer spray. It's not even, it, you know, it just kind of happened. It was, I, I was able to get a hold of it. I tweaked it, made my own products out of it. Um, added some aloes, some essential oils, and was really giving it away online. And I probably wow. will again because, yeah, yeah, it, you know, it's just a one ounce size. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, like about this size, it's not too big, but it's perfect for, you know, your pocket, your purse, your, you know, your car. Right. And that was also part of, I didn't sell it right away um, because I really just used labels that I had and printed them off my own label machine, which is not what I do anymore. You know, we're past, I'm past that, but it was like on a pinch and I'm like, people need it and let's do it, you know. And when people purchase, we're doing free shipping now. So those, those you know, all those kind of uh the dynamics of change. We never did free shipping because I always kind of want to support, you know, let's support the stores, support local, support the community, the small stores. You were trying um, not to compete with them. I was trying exactly not to compete with them, but right now they weren't ordering. You had to so pivot. We have to do what we have to do. Right. And, and yeah. And then, like I said, I was able to get a hold of these sanitizers, which was great. And let's give them away. I mean, people need them. So wow. let's do it. We also gave, actually, we gave, um, Ooh, what did I give? I think I gave, I want to say two, three, four, maybe 400 um, uh, hydrating mists to different um, hospitals. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that, for the that was fun. essential workers or? Yeah, for the essential workers. Yeah. We made up little bags and we gave them um, chapsticks. We gave them little samples and then like a one ounce, like again, this size of a hydrating mist because those masks are horrible. I had to wear one for 10 hours and I, oof, they're terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Four people. Necessary thing, but it can be drying, it right? Can be, yeah, especially, you know, if you're working, I'm talking 24 hours, you know, and sure. with it, so, yeah. So that, that, you know, so that was a nice thing. We gave them to out in Long Island, um, Michigan, someone to. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. So giving back is a big part of your culture and mission at your company. Sure. Why not? Yeah. That's great. So I know we only have a couple more minutes. So tell everyone uh, what your product line is and where they can buy it. Okay. So, I mean, really quick, we have that Barberry Fig line, which uh, I told you about the cleansing oil. We make a hydrating mist. So this is all the Barberry Fig line. We make three I love, oils. by the way. <laughs> The hydra, the, this is the hydrating mist we gave to the other, uh, to the people. Yeah, but not this size, but this was, this is amazing. Um, all the information's online at uh, neonaturalsinc.com. We make the three beauty oils, which are specifically formulated for your skin type. We make a scrub, which is a dry scrub made with chia seed oil. Um, then we make a hemp seed oil line which has the same exact concept. It's a green label. This is great for men or women uh, because guys have faces too and men are really paying attention. So again, 100% all natural cleansing oil, hydrating mist, and we make a beautiful um, serum. I do make a beard balm now. And then we make a small body line. This is a uh, body elixir. It really has like all these beautiful all natural oils for your skin. We make a body bar. I make an eye serum, which is to die for. It's a miracle anti-aging eye serum that has really super precious oils in it. And the newest thing that we're launching is another body elixir. This is called a new day body elixir. And oh, I don't even know about this. Now I know. Surprise! So this is really fun because it's called A New Day and it's made with essential oils. Um, And these essential oils are very beneficial to uplifting. It has lemon, which is uplifting. Grapefruit will actually, the smell of grapefruit helps you to um, uh, not not eat so much. (laughs) It helps suppress, that's the word I was looking for, sorry. Suppress your appetite, which we are all gonna, you know, could get COVID-19 in this for sure. 
and it has some black pepper, which is very grounding. So it helps you to calm yourself. And ylang ylang is kind of like they say it like an aphrodisiac, but it's also helps with self love. So um, nice. yeah. So it's got a really pretty blend and that's going to be launching. Um, that's just going to be a special edition launching uh, Memorial weekend. Awesome. Yeah. So if someone uh, would like to buy your products, how can they do that? So like you can go online because we do have all our stores. We have some boutiques in uh, Warwick. We're in some hair salons. We're in uh, your natural grocery type stores mm -hmm. throughout the Hudson Valley. Uh, many of them throughout the Hudson Valley. And like I explained before, so you can find that list on um, the website under where to buy. And what's your and website? It's uh, neanaturalsinc.com. So it's N E A naturals with an S I N C.com. And you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. Um, and we're doing the free shipping, as I had mentioned. And we're doing some a lot of giveaways. This weekend, we're actually doing a four ounce uh, cleansing oil, and you get a um, eye serum for free. This is a killer deal because wow. this is. $42 value. This is 36. So you're going to wow. get the two for 36. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So Jill, um, you, I have been in the business now, you said five years. Yeah. Just uh, working on sex. Yeah. Heading okay. into sex. So I guess my last question for you is where do you see yourself and your business in the, in the next couple of years? Uh, I still see, I still see a manufacturing plant. My vision is conveyor belts. <laughs> conveyor <laughs> belts with cases. Mass production? That's mass production, yeah. Same formula, yeah. same quality. Yeah, I really don't want to outsource anything either. I really just want to, again, I want to support the community as well. So hopefully, you know, have a, a couple employees and uh, yeah. And, uh, and we'll see what happens. Why not? Excellent. Right? <laughs> yes, you can do anything, my friend. So I just want to thank you, and I love you, uh, thank Joe Vaza you. of Mia Natural. So thank I hope you. that you all got some great stuff out of this. Um, and I think regardless of the business you're in or the product that you represent, there's just some really valuable nuggets of information and lessons that we can take from sharing each other's stories. So thank you for doing this. Thank you. Love all you. All right, so find Jill on neonaturalsinc.com as well as all the social platforms that she mentioned. So we'll be back with another episode of Surviving to Thrive series soon. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys very soon. Jill, I love you. Love you. Have a great day, everyone. All right, you too. Bye. Thanks.